Good afternoon from the garden and welcome to a mid-December harvest video. Even though the amount of food we've been uh, harvesting from the garden has been diminishing steadily over the past month or two, there's still quite a bit to harvest. So let me take you on a little harvest tour of the garden. I am also planning on writing a blog post about the meals that we'll be making from the homegrown produce in the coming week. Uh, I will put the link down in the description box once the post is up. And I'm also thinking of maybe doing a little video about what we're cooking with the produce, but I'm not quite sure about that yet. For those of you who are new here, let me give you a bit of context. We live in garden in the Netherlands and we're close to the German border, which means we are as far from the sea, about as far from the sea as you can get in the country. And that means that our uh, climate is a bit colder than most of the Netherlands. Um, our first frost this year was around mid-October and it's been freezing these past nights and partially during the days as well. So the cold is definitely a limiting factor on we can, what we can grow and harvest during the winter. And another limitation is the low um, day, uh, light levels because we're quite far to the north. And to those, those of you who are in North America, and I know there are quite many viewers in North America, to give you uh, an idea, our daughter is currently studying at Queen's University Kingston in Canada, and she's further to the south than we are which means that her days currently are longer than our days. Because the cold and the dark uh, limits uh, or slows down plant growth considerably, if you want to be harvesting something fresh from the garden in December, you have to start planning and sowing quite a bit uh, ahead. And in some cases, the produce that I will show you was sown in June, say, and in some cases, even as early as April. I have a bit of order when it comes to harvesting, starting with the, um, with the more, most robust vegetables that will not be suffering uh, if left uh, for a bit before I harvest the rest. So I start with the roots, then move on to things like cabbage, kale, and then um, lastly I harvest the leaves for salads and herbs. So let's head to the first bed, which is my roots, mostly roots bed, with carrots and beets and the bed has been covered with um, insect netting mostly to prevent carrot fly damage which unfortunately has not been 100% effective but still it has helped quite a bit I think. So let's start with the carrots and oh look at this one it's beautiful. The variety that I'm growing this year is called Nantes 2. And um, yeah, it's been, the, the carrots are also beautifully stray, which has not always been the case. I think some of the beds, our beds um, have been previously compacted. The ground has been compacted, so it has obviously effect on the growth of root vegetables. But in this bed, it's, uh, yeah, the, the harvest is really splendid and they're so sweet. Oh, these are these are tiny, but they're so sweet um, and they get sweeter because of the frost. So, um, you know, it's like it's like candy from the garden at the moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm loath to cook with them, so we eat most of them raw actually at this point. And as I said, there is some um, carrot fly damage, but it's very slight. It's much less than, uh, for example, last year. So overall, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the carrots this year. So let's move on to the beets. I have some of the regular, oh, this is a huge one, um, red beets, those. But there are also some of the pretty striped Dikyocha beets over here. And uh, the beet harvest is definitely nearing the end. Uh, I don't want to leave them much longer, but this week we will still feast on beets. Before I cover the bed again, uh, now it's more again against the cold than against insects, obviously. Uh, there are two stray bunching onions, which will be great for some winter salads. I don't know yet. I'm, I'm usually, I'm, 
while harvesting I'm often already thinking about what I'll be cooking uh, but bunching onions are just something that you can chop finely and then put on pretty much any dish Now let's move on to the cabbages and kale. Because cabbages are a magnet for many pests, I usually either grow them in a polyculture so that other plants will mask their scent, or I protect them with insect netting at least at the beginning of their growth. So this is what, that's why I um, had several different varieties of cabbage and kale here together and then they, the bed was covered with fleece for quite a bit. And well, there are still some things. There are also some things that did not go so well, by the way, in the garden. Um, this is a Romanesco broccoli that I sowed in June, I think. And it has not formed hearts. It has not hearted in time. So uh, I am leaving it. We'll see how, whether, whether it might still happen, uh, maybe in the spring but this will very much depend on whether um, whether the uh, on the temperatures that we get during the winter I think I am going to pick one of the last cabbages oh this <laughs> is so thick I can't even cut through the stem and I might um, ferment some like make sauerkraut we'll see Now one of my favorite members of the cabbage family, um, Cavolo Nero or the Tuscan kale. Kale does better on our sandy soils than many other uh, cabbage varieties of other uh, members of the brassica family. Like uh, uh, large cabbages are pretty hard for us to grow. But kale does always well. And I grow different varieties, but Tuscan kale is one of the prettiest definitely and one of uh, my favorites. Another super dependable winter vegetable is uh, leeks. And there's so many things you can do with them. So I'm already thinking, well, maybe potato leek soup or potato galette. I have a great recipe on the block. I'm feeling like that, uh, like eating that the coming week. Um, I am growing two varieties this year, two Dutch varieties. Uh, Herfstreuzen, which means uh, fall giant, and Blaugroene winter, which is blue-green um, blue winter <laughs> variety. So that one is, uh, it's, uh, oh, there's some uh, damage, but you know, that's, uh, I'll just peel the, when I just peel the top part then uh, we have uh, nice leeks. I wish I had, I only sowed them around mid-April. I wish I had done that a few weeks earlier. Um, I'm often not that great at sowing for some, some reason. There are the crops that you always neglect or don't, uh, um, don't sow in time. Maybe it's because of the long time that passes between the sowing and the harvest. <laughs> But, you know, I love leeks and I should, I should uh, take better care to sow them in time. And one more thing I wanted to mention, what you see growing under the leeks is winter purslane, which is a great winter green. And I will be picking some of that too. Um, so it's not, it's self so so it's kind of a living mulch at the moment. Some veggies, some crops are definitely nearing the end of their harvestable season. And one of them is radicchio here. I want to have a look. We have harvested a few. They don't like the rain mainly. Like I could have protected them with a cloche 
should have protected them with a cloche then they would uh, remain in better shape but I have not done that so you can see the outer leaves start rotting oh but usually when you peel them away then you still have a nice heart and the leaves have such beautiful vibrant color when you get to them and a nice bitter taste which I really enjoy in contrast to other winter greens the last vegetable green I want to pick outside before I head into the slightly more hospitable a greenhouse is chard another really dependable crop for us even though how much of it we'll be able to harvest during winter depends on the temperatures but so far um, there is not it's not been too cold for it so it's still regrowing a little and we can still pick it and I already have a dish in mind for for this one that even my son will enjoy There are a few more plants around the garden uh, because chard self sows as well. It's a, it's a biennial vegetable and if you don't take it out in fall then, uh, and it will sur and survives the winter, then it runs to seed in the next spring and it will self sow a bit. Um, so I will just go around the garden and pick a few more. But now let's head into the greenhouse first. There's lots more to harvest in the greenhouse, mainly greens, um, but I think we will film a dedicated video to what we're growing in the greenhouse this year. Uh, what I want to harvest now are some of these uh, bok choys that are running to seed, some of the tatsoi, uh, we have uh, mustard greens and we have three different varieties of lettuce and two different varieties of Belgian and Divy, which I will be, uh, which I'm picking all of the lettuces and the andivy I'm uh, picking leaf by leaf so uh, they keep regrowing even though they will regrow less now during the darkest time of the year but they will pick up again uh, in spring I'm so happy uh, about being able to harvest so many salad greens in the middle of the winter because the, you know this is quality that you cannot buy it's uh, you can buy salads and they're just they don't have any taste so um, I'm so happy that we are able to do this it's mainly thanks to uh, being able to have a greenhouse but even with something like a cold frame you, uh, which we had before we had a greenhouse, you're still able to grow a variety of things like uh, um, mustard leaves for uh, repeated harvesting by cut and come again. The last thing that I'm harvesting, like I said, are herbs. And uh, I have uh, quite a few parsley plants in the greenhouse, which were sown outside, but then I replanted them into the greenhouse so that we can keep harvesting them in the winter. Parsley is a wonderful herb and it's quite hardy. Um, you can even build a meal around it. You know, I usually use it for soups. I would cut the stalks in little pieces and add them when I add um, things like onion and uh, the basis, you know, the celery, onion and uh, carrots. And then I would leave, uh, use the leaves for garnish. But there are also dishes that have parsley as their main component. I have a parsley risotto recipe by Nigel Slater that I'm thinking that I'll maybe make. Uh, and there are other herbs that we use throughout the winter. Rosemary, which we have at home, and sage growing in front of our house in a sheltered spot. And there's still some time that I will be, be, be picking. 
So my harvest basket is pretty heavy by now. And this is not even all that we can use. We still have some produce stored at home, like lots of winter squash. I have a winter squash video about this year's varieties of the varieties that we grew this year, which I will link um, if you want to know more about that. Also our sweet potatoes. We still have some potatoes, some regular potatoes, not a lot. Um, apples and a bit of quince. So I'm feeling pretty good about the dinners this week and I will let you know what we make with all the produce. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments whether you're still able to harvest from your gardens in December and what is it you're growing for winter harvests. Happy gardening!